One of the things that I'm, I guess, kind of fascinated with because it's my own situation as well, being in journalism and deciding primarily for family reasons that it's time to make a change. And when you've been doing something your entire career and you're kind of wondering what happens next, what, what are, how are my skill sets transferable to something else, I guess I, I'd like you to kind of look back and, and maybe what would you say to other women who are feeling that way or maybe feel like they know deep down they need to make a change, but they're concerned that maybe they don't have the skills they need other than what they're currently doing? That's a great question. Um, so, as I said, I was at The Vindicator for 17 years and I was um, almost 40 when I left. I was a kid when I went. I had this great opportunity coming right out of YSU to go back to The Vindicator after a great summer internship and be a full-time reporter. Um, and I'll always be grateful for that. But at the time that I left, I was a new mom, my, my first child, and I did not want the lifestyle of a reporter any longer when I had waited so long to have a child. So I said, something has to change here. Um, and even the day that I left The Vindicator, I was not sure that I had made the right decision. But what I found out, and it didn't take too long to find out, was that um, the things that I had done in the way of communications and um, working for was a significant sized news organization. So you had to work in tandem with other people. You had to work independently. Um, the, the communication skills that I had uh, refined in that time um, had great value outside of the newsroom as well. And so the first thing that I did was go to the Mahoning County Treasurer's Office um, where they were creating a position because they had this cog that they were creating, but it lacked any sort of communication strategy. It didn't have any printed materials to hand out or anything like that. So I spent my time at um, the treasurer's office as a community outreach specialist, and I was doing part of the work for the COG and getting it started through communications and doing some communications for the treasurer as well. And the first director of the COG had resigned after one year. He said he was retiring and moving out of state. Um, so I was asked if I wanted to interview for the director's position, and I did, and I felt very fortunate to receive that position. And again, I think it was because I had not only the communications background, but my time at the Vindicator also gave me a deep understanding of the, the county. Um, because I had been in all five counties doing something or other with the Vindicator. I understood the geography and I understood the people. Um, I understood the, the value of tradition here. I understood the, the great ethnicity that existed here. I understood a lot of the struggles too because I had to report on many of those. Um, all of that did add up to something outside of the newsroom. And so that nervousness I felt on that final day didn't take too long to subside. I realized that I had done the right thing, certainly for my family, um, but also that, you know, I, I was not limited in the way that I was perceiving myself to be limited, that I had done one thing for so long. How could I possibly make a change? But, but I have, and I'm glad that I did it. I really am. And I think more women, more of anybody who wants to make a change, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of times it's hard to have that confidence to do that when you have done something for so long. So switching gears, you were in journalism for 17 years. A lot has changed over the years, um, obviously even with The Vindicator. Yes. Um, what, what are your thoughts on print media, on journalism, and, and how it's changed to a multimedia, and just in general. I mean, right now even, and I know I'm asking a bunch of questions at once, but a lot of journalists are, get a lot of criticism these days, you know, uh, spe specifically television journalists, but just kind of some overall thoughts. Something has been happening for a long time, you know, and, and we're feeling the ramifications right now of a lot of polarization um, among the citizenry. But I will tell you, I felt that happening in my 17 years at The Vindicator, and I'm now 15 years removed from the paper. Um, 
When I was a kid growing up in Niles, and you know, the Tribune Chronicle would show up every day, I'd spread it out on the floor and read it. And it was out of that experience that I thought, my opinion of newspapers is that they were windows to the world. And if I opened up the newspaper, I was going to find out what was happening in my hometown and somewhere on the other side of the ocean, right? But when I became a reporter, as I continued to do that work, I started to, to sense that people were less interested in a window to the world and more a reflection of themselves. They wanted a mirror instead of a window. Mm -hmm. And I know it bothered me back then, but clearly the, the ramifications of that have exploded since I left full-time journalism. Um, it, it saddens me, it frightens me, and you know we need to dialogue in a, in a more old-fashioned way where people were able to express themselves in a, in a more civil fashion. Um, because I, I don't like the polarization that exists right now. I think that the changes as far as becoming multimedia, um, I see them as more good than, than um, bad because it's, it's still storytelling. And it might be in some ways a more complete way of storytelling and certainly a more modernized way that meets the expectations of younger viewers who did not grow up spreading the newspaper on the floor and reading it after school like I did every day. Um, but I also am concerned, um, I mourned the loss of the Vindicator, I really did. And uh, there, was a, uh, there was a community meeting a couple days after that announcement a couple years ago, and it was at the Historical Society and the Youngstown Press Club and the Rotary Club had sponsored it. And there was a lot of dialogue that night. And I was one of the people who said, you know, some of these beats in local journalism really need to be protected from the ups and the downs of the business world because they're too important. They should always be present and they should be insulated from economic upturns or downturns really is the problem. Um, so I think some of that you see emerging slowly where you have um, some sort of sponsorship behind a particular type of reporting so that it will be uh, you know, insulated, like I said. Um, because there are some, some news outlets can provide information and, and all of the locals are using it, right? The Associated Press. We all look to the Associated Press for some synopsis of events that are happening outside of the community. But who's going to cover local arts? Who knows best about what's happening in the local school districts? Who is going to talk about local politics in the same way that somebody who lives here is going to report on them. Those are the things that I think need continued protection because we can't live without them. Um, maybe there are still great advertising opportunities when it comes to sports reporting because my kid plays three sports, so we're always at Dick's buying something or other, right? So there might be some stronger advertising connections there, but there has to be some assurance that there will always be local journalism and that some of these beats are just worthy of being protected um, because they, are, they, they can't be defeated. They, they can't go away. They're just invaluable. Thanks for watching the video. Be sure to like, subscribe, and hit that little bell for notifications. And also make sure to connect with us on Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn. For all of your business news, visit businessjournaldaily.com. For all of your arts and entertainment news, go to afterhoursyoungstown.com. Built for the 21st century American workforce, Eastern Gateway Community College has two campuses and is a national leader in online learning. EGCC.edu is a digital gateway where 30,000 students are quickly transforming their financial futures through degrees, certificates, transferable credits, and higher paying jobs. And now, residents of the Mahoning Valley can enroll in summer classes for free. It's the EGCC Summer Guarantee. Eastern Gateway, America's new workforce starts here.